Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Bolo, 
Jose, Jose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and kirtan no other way but chanting the holy names ki ananda vrindavan prabhu ki who chants the holy names 24 hours a day <laughs> Hare krishna welcome Hare krishna uh, just to give you some news probably many of you know but his holiness radha swami maharaj is now in india has arrived about two hours ago, and now he's on his way to Govardhan Echo Village. That's both happy and sad. <laughs> we were hoping he'd come here, but he's been tirelessly serving the Sankirtan movement, so he decided to become less tired. <laughs> But I guess he'll be here in a few days. I think that's the plan to come on the 11th. Let's see how that plan unfolds. <laughs> okay, so Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, 15th chapter, verse number 46. The chapter is entitled, The Pandavas Retire Timely. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sarukrite Sarvarta Gyatvayantikam Atmanaha Manasadarayam Asur Vaikunta Charanam Bujam Te Sadu Kritam Sarvarta Yad Fatyantikam Atmanaha Manasadarayam Asur Vaikunta Charanam Bujam Te Sadu Krita Sarvarta Yad Fatyantikam Atmanaha Manasadarayam Asur Vaikunta Charanam Bujam We couldn't, we couldn't hear you. Could you do it again? <laughs> One more time. Go ahead. <laughs> One more time. Manasadharayam <laughs> asur
ladies. One lady, we need some lady representative here. Just one? No ladies? Okay. Um, hmm. Te, all of them. Sadhu Krita, having performed everything, worthy of a saint. Sarva Artha, that which includes everything worthy. Gyatva, knowing it well. Atyantikam, the ultimate. Atmanaha, of the living being. Manasa, within the mind. Darayam, asu, sustained. Vaikunta, the lord of the spiritual sky. Charanam Ambujam, the lotus feet. Translation. He's referring to the Pandavas. They all had performed all the principles of religion and as a result rightly decided that the lotus feet of Lord Krishna are the supreme goal of all. Therefore they meditated upon his feet without interruption. Mm. In the Bhagavad Gita 7.28 the Lord says that only those who have done pious deeds in previous lives and become freed from the results of impious acts can concentrate upon the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. The Pandavas, not only in this life, but also in previous lives, had always performed the supreme pious work, and thus they were ever free from all the reactions of impious work. It is quite reasonable, therefore, that they concentrated their mind upon the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. According to Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha principles are accepted by persons who are not free from the results of impious action. Such persons affected with the contamination of the above four principles cannot as w at once accept the lotus feet of the Lord in the spiritual sky. The Vaikuntha world is situated far beyond the material sky. The material sky is under the man management of Durga Devi or the material energy of the Lord, but the Vaikuntha world is managed by the personal energy of the Lord. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Nina Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvase Sa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Taru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Vecha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Vakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare hmm. So here we're hearing about the goal of Krishna consciousness and that is to fix one's consciousness firmly upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And there are two recommended uh, ways to do that. Of course, there, there are other ways that we can also do it, but the recommended ways are emphasized throughout the scriptures. And one of them is mentioned here. To concentrate fully on the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What does it mean to concentrate fully on the lotus feet of the Lord? Of course, as it's mentioned here, it's something that is not easily attainable only by those who are free from all reactions of impious activities and engage in activities of devotion can actually become qualified to concentrate onto the lotus feet of the Lord. Because the lotus feet of the Lord also has many meanings that we can also explain. 
And one of them means pure devotional service. I want pure devotional service unto you. And this is where that is found at the lotus feet of the Lord. The lotus feet of the Lord indicates complete surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotion. And to be able to concentrate one's attention fully on the lotus feet of the Lord means one has to become pure. So what does it mean to become pure? That means one has to stop all impious activities and all activities of material enjoyment. In other words, one has to stop engaging in all material activities and be fully absorbed in the activities of devotional service. Although one may still have not reached the stage of complete purity, they are acting in the pure realm. In other words, they're acting purely. And gradually, through that elimination of all material activities, because when you understand clearly, all material activities are impure because they contaminate the pure consciousness of the living entity, which is a reflection in his, of his love for the Supreme Lord. So when there is a material activity, it's a spot over that pure, clear consciousness. And when that spot is accumulated over many lifetimes, it becomes a complete covering. But these spots are simply uh, taints of the association of the material energy. So one can stop, you know, adding these spots by simply stopping all material activities. And material activities are activities that are meant simply for one's own personal gain or for the gain of someone in relationship to that person also. That's all. So one has to engage in devotional service. Here we're hearing the Pandavas. They, uh, they, they fought a war. <laughs> they were engaged in battle, but on behalf of religious principles. So their, devo their fighting was actually a, a service to the Supreme Personality of God. And sometimes people will find fault with uh, Krishna speaking Bhagavad Gita in the midst of a very powerful and a very, uh, what we say, furious battle. But actually Krishna was using that as a way to establish religious principles worldwide. Krishna had done everything he could to try to avert a war, but the op opposite party, the Kauravas headed by Duryodhana and his father, Dhritarashtra, didn't want to take any compromise. They simply wanted to usurp the kingdom from the rightful heirs, which were the Pandavas. The Pandavas had the rightful heirs of the throne because Pandu was the next heir to the throne, but because Pandava died untimely, there's his sons were actually the heir. But uh, Dhritarashtra claimed, well, actually, I'm the brother of Pandava, therefore I should get the throne. But he wasn't qualified to get the throne because he was blind. Not only blind material, but it's also mentioned he didn't have, he had spiritual blindness too. He couldn't understand the position of the, the Supreme Personality of Lord Sri Krishna, who was standing right in front of him. <laughs> and therefore, he refused to cooperate along with his sons with the Supreme Lord and give the Pandavas their rightly kingdom. And so Krishna did everything he could to avert a war. He even went to Duryodhana himself and said, you know, Duryodhana, these are Kshatriyas, and we understand you are also a Kshatriya. You can understand that Kshatriyas must have some kingdom to rule. So, all right, you rule the world, but give them five villages. That's all. Five villages to rule, because they're Kshatriyas. They must perform their dharma. But uh, Yodhana was envious and greedy, which are the qualities of the lower modes of material nature. And for he, he couldn't consider it, even giving five villages to the rightful heirs of the whole world. Therefore, when Krishna made that very direct and very humble plea, actually Krishna was quite humble, when he presented that to Duryodhana, Duryodhana got angry at Krishna. 
And he called his soldiers to arrest Krishna. <laughs> of course, nobody can arrest the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But he was thinking, you know, Krishna should be controlled. So they came, but then Krishna did something. He showed his universal form, and all of the soldiers went flying in different directions. And Duryodhana, he even saw the universal form, and you'd think he would change. Oh, here's the Supreme Lord, and he's asking something. He's the supreme ultimate authority in, in all areas. But one is, if one is covered or what we say, involved with activities of the lower modes, such as passion and ignorance. And what that means, personal gain and a desire to conquer over others in order to get more. That's the mode of ignorance. They can't see truth, just like sometimes we go out preaching. And we can explain very clearly the importance of chanting the holy names and engaging in devotional service to the Lord. But people can't understand the importance of it. Even if you explain to them how different, they will even admit that they're suffering in their life. But they consider, you know, what we have to say is very impractical. <laughs> Not practical. <laughs> it interferes with my sense gratification, therefore it's impractical. <laughs> Anything that interferes with my sense gratification cannot be considered even something that I would think about doing. <laughs> because sense gratification in the material world is the goal of life. And to satisfy the senses unlimitedly is the, is the aspiration of the materialist. Therefore, even though they may even recognize that this person that they're talking to is in a better position than I am, still they can't accept him. <laughs> and because it's, because, it's just because of that coverings of the material energy. becoming It's so thick that even logic, reason, and various others, just like Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana, were given good counseling. Dhritarashtra by Vidura. Vidura was the son, um, I'm sorry, he was the, the younger brother of Dhritarashtra. And he was actually Vidura, uh, he was actually Yamaraj who had come in that form of Vidura to assist Krishna in his pastimes. And when he was trying to explain to his older brother, he couldn't hear. And Dhritarashtra also admitted, what you're saying is correct, but I can't do it. Haribo. You know, on the cigarette package it says, if you smoke, uh, it used to be smoking causes lung cancer. And then they decided to make it a little stronger. So that after that, they came out with the package. C cigarette uh, smoking causes uh, complications in pregnancies, lung cancer, emphysema, and they put a whole long list. And that, that didn't work either. The sales of cigarettes continued to increase. So then they put, because I go through the different airports and I have to pass these stores and you see these big boxes of cigarettes and now it says smoking kills two words and so <laughs> it's all I have on the package now but it, the sales are still up <laughs> Prabhupada said ne chong means I know it's not good but I can't change <laughs> no, this is uh, this is material uh, obstinacy that, that even though no, someone knows it's wrong and it's not good, still the attachment goes so deep. And that's, that is the nature of material life because the more one engages in material activities, the more one gets a tendency for that activity. That's mentioned in the Nectar Devotion, that all material activities have two results. One is they get a reaction according to the quality of that material activity whether it's goodness, passion, or ignorance. And the second thing is the tendency to perform that activity increases, even if it causes suffering. Only when people become so unable to enjoy their senses anymore, then they think, well, maybe I should stop <laughs> when they are dying <laughs> or when they're overcome with disease and some kind of 
you know, uh, cancer or something, then they're forced to stop. But material life is so addicting that uh, even in the most intelligent person cannot understand the value of giving it up and taking to, you know, a very simple lifestyle of just glorifying the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, it becomes so hard to preach Krishna consciousness in this age because the power of the material energy is very, very strong. But for a devotee, a devotee understands that anything I do in the material world will simply make my life in Krishna consciousness very difficult. Sometimes devotees like to play with the material energy a little bit just to see what it's like, you know. You know, I haven't seen this movie yet. And everybody's talking about it, so, you know, it won't hurt. I'll be back chanting Hare Krishna tomorrow. But today, you know, it's a little different day. So let me go check out the movie. And then you see something in the movie you shouldn't have seen. <laughs> and then in, that impression is on your mind. And then after that, you can't chant Hare Krishna <laughs> Care, carefully. Just like um, there, was, there was one brahmachari in, uh, where I was preaching in the Balkans area. The Balkans is the, the former Yugoslavia area on the Mediterranean Sea. So they went out on the Christmas marathon, all the brahmacharis. So this one brahmachari, he went out alone. And he was good. He was one of the best of all of the book distributors. Good preacher, qualified to, you know, in all ways of Krishna consciousness, fixed in Krishna consciousness. So he's out alone distributing books. So after one day of finishing his book distribution, he was on his computer. And he pushed the wrong button. Aye, well. And he saw something he shouldn't have seen. <laughs> on the screen. And, but instead of, you know, immediately leaving that scene, he became attracted for whatever reason. And he started to think, look at it. And then that image, the more you engage in the activities of something material, the more the impression has upon you and becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. So that image that he saw was not good for him. And, uh, but he couldn't stop looking at it. And after a while, his whole Krishna consciousness was upside down. He couldn't chant. All he could, that image kept flashing in his mind. He couldn't get it out of his mind, even if he wanted to. And then later on, you know, after some time, I met him and he told me the whole story personally. I said, well, <laughs> There's only one formula, just chant Hare Krishna and don't stop. <laughs> and don't stop. And he did. And after some time, he was back to his, you know, good self again. So, but it was quite a while, it was at least a couple months that he fell out of that just by, and this is the power of the material. Even Srila Prabhupada said, sometimes, on the plane, we have the movies, and we see something, and that, that impression sticks in our mind, and we can't get rid of it. Even Prabhupada said about himself, as you know, when you travel on planes, the old days, now the new days is everybody has their little private, you know, movie. You can watch your own movie. But, but the old days was they had one screen in the middle, of, in the front, and everybody was watching the same movie. <laughs> it was a big screen, and it, they didn't have the individual ones. So that's when Prabhupada was traveling around. So Prabhupada gave that impression that when he was traveling, he saw things. He couldn't help seeing it because it's such a, you know, it's right in, in front of you. Maya is always there to remind you what, how nice she is, you know. <laughs> that's her program, to, to remind you how nice. When you forget, she sends you a nice reminder. Yeah. Yes, who's that? It's Maya. Oh, really? Well, actually, I haven't finished my rounds today. Can you come back tomorrow? All right. See you tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes. Yes, who's there? You, it's Maya. You told me to come back today. Uh, yeah, I still have rounds to go. <laughs> so come back tomorrow. 
and then she comes back tomorrow. Maya is back again, and she come, you said, come back tomorrow. I said, yes, tomorrow. That means tomorrow. <laughs> I told you, tomorrow. <laughs> so tomorrow never comes, it's always today. <laughs> It's like in India, when you go to the man at the counter and you ask, when is the plane coming so I can board? And he says, uh, it'll be here in 15 minutes. And so you go sit down in your chair and you come back in 15 minutes, you come back and you ask again. He said, I told you, 15 minutes. <laughs> Don't you understand? <laughs> and then you go sit down again, you come back after some time. He said, why you keep coming? I said, 15 minutes. <laughs> Anyway, that's a little pun. That's a, that's a little Indian cultural uh, trait. <laughs> anyway, um, so this idea of keeping the consciousness on Krishna is a a moment-to-moment -moment activity. Because Maya, and Prabhupada explains, he uses one verse, that Krishna is right in front. If you look forward, you see Krishna. But if you look this way a little, this way, this way, this way, whatever way you look other than forward, Maya is there to remind you what you should be doing or what you should be thinking about. So that's Maya. Therefore, in this verse, it gives one of the complete, as I mentioned, there's two ways that you can become fully absorbed in Krishna. One as mentioned here, by always meditating on the lotus feet of the Lord in devotion. But the quali it's qualified here that one cannot come to that platform unless they are freed from all impious activities and fully engaged in devotional service. And even then, it's not easy. But it's possible. But the other way is Mahaprabhu's mercy. Enechi asadi maya nasi badilagi, harinam maha mantra lao tumi magi. The chanting of the Hare Krishna maha mantra is non different than the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Mahaprabhu has taken that principle of the lotus feet and made it more easily acceptable through chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare. And one who continuously, as it says, Satatam Kirtayantomam in the Bhagavad Gita, mentions that one should glorify the Lord Satatam. Satatam means always. One can actually come to the stage of meditating upon the lotus feet of the Lord simply by the chanting of the Hare Krishna. It's actually non-different. But that stage of perfection is really complete when one's mind is completely fixed on Krishna, like that. And one can see, well, as it says in the Bhagavad Gita, when you thus learn the truth, you know that all living beings are in me, they're my parts and parcels, they are mine. That means to see Krishna and everything and everything in Krishna. And that comes with the practice of devotional service. So here, um, the instruction is that one has to gradually remove themselves from all material activities, because all material activities are impious. As Srila Prabhupada said, pious and impious, it's all impious. <laughs> Why? Because it leads a one away from Krishna consciousness. In fact, when one suffers in the material world due to wrong activities, they're more likely to come to Krishna consciousness than one who is nicely situated in the material world practicing in a mode of goodness. Because they think that the mode of goodness is the actual goal of life and the perfection of how one can find happiness in this world. And so Prabhupada was discussing this with the, the, the devotees about the mode of goodness, and they were getting a discussion. Prabhupada was giving some of the characteristics of the mode of goodness, and one devotee came up and said, Srila Prabhupada, the mode of goodness is characterized by happiness. And Prabhupada said, actually, the mode of goodness is knowledge. 
And that knowledge teaches you there's no happiness. <laughs> so that's the understanding of the, the... The actual quality of the mode of goodness is that knowledge teaches us that material happiness is really not happiness. It's just a step up from material suffering. That's all. That's explained in the Shastras too. When If you stop suffering, you think you're happy. But that's not happiness. Happiness is actually the quality of the living entity's uh, character, characteristic or connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Happiness exists within the soul. And it can only be brought out when that, that soul is connected to the Supreme Soul, who is the source of all happiness. Anandam Bhuti Vardhanam. Unlimited reservoir of, of happiness is there, available, in the soul's existence when it connects with the Supreme Lord in devotion. And so material happiness is simply just an illusion. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> if you're hungry, that's painful. It can, be, be, can cause some types of difficulty. Hunger is one of the whips of the material energy. So you satisfy your hunger by eating food, and you think, wow, I'm happy now. But what did you do? You counteracted suffering. That's all. So counteracting of suffering is not happiness. It's just what it is, counteracting suffering. So that's how the material world goes on. If someone can counteract suffering some, for some while, they think, oh, I'm happy. But just wait a few moments. <laughs> There's a story about one particular king he had everything. This is just an antidote. It's not a live story, but it's a message story. So one king, he had everything in the world. And he was thinking, what don't I have that I want? So he, he was thinking, hmm. So he called his ministers and said, I want something that when I'm happy, that item will make me unhappy. And when I'm unhappy, that item will make me happy. And so the ministers were baffled. <laughs> what is he asking? <laughs> they couldn't figure out. So one of the ministers, the leader minister, says, King, give me some time. I'll get you what you want. <laughs> After some days, he came back and he had a ring. And on the ring, there was an inscription with four words. And he gave the ring to the king, and he said, you, here, you wear this ring, and when you feel happy, you read this, and you'll feel unhappy. And when you're unhappy, you read this, you'll feel happy. So they gave him the ring, and the king looks at the ring, and the four words were, this soon will end. <laughs> This soon will end. <laughs> so that's the nature of everything material. It goes, and then it comes, and it goes. It comes, and it goes. But suffering doesn't go as easy as, come, uh, go as easy as happiness goes. Because suffering is the nature of this material world, as Krishna says, Gudukalayam, Asasratam, Anityam, Asubam. Suffering has a tendency just like how many ways in this way in the world can you actually become happy materially but how many ways can you suffer make a list <laughs> you'll see which list is longer <laughs> you can actually make an encyclopedia of the ways you suffer you know it's there's so many ways i remember radhana swami gave a little example of that he said your little toe on your foot how much pleasure can it give you if somebody drops, you know, a table on it, <laughs> you can understand how much pain it's going to give you. <laughs> so, yeah, so the, the things in this world are, are simply designed to give us miserable misery. No matter how nice they may appear for a certain period of time, they'll change within due course of time. That's just the nature of this world. So one who is intelligent, one has, what is it, what is called sumedasa, that, that intelligence will take shelter of the Lord in devotional service. 
and glorify the Lord by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. But let me chant more and more and more, just like Srila Prabhupada said. When you're, when you're actually chanting Hare Krishna, you think, 16 rounds? Why not 16,000 rounds? Hmm. Yeah. He gives that example that when, when one starts to develop the ruchi, that sweet taste that comes by chanting Krishna's name, one wants to continue to chant, chant, chant. And then one after some time, they can't stop chanting. You can't even talk to them because they're always chanting. <laughs> There's that one story in the life of one uh, Babaji. He was actually a great soul. He was living in Jagannath Puri. And uh, he was constantly chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And even if he wanted to stop, he couldn't. He had reached such a stage of, of perfection in his devotion that he was naturally chanting, even while he was sleeping and the chanting was going on. It was, he would chant 24 hours a day. So one day when he was walking to the place where one takes care of nature, he was thinking, hmm, I'm always chanting and I have to bring the holy name into this dirty place. That's not right. Krishna is so pure. Why well, should bring Krishna into this dirty place? So, what you, oh, I'm going to stop chanting, but I can't stop chanting. So he decided to make an effort to stop. So he grabbed his tongue with his fingers and held his tongue so he couldn't chant. So while he was walking towards taking care of nature, one little boy comes along. He said, hey, Babaji, what are you doing? said, well, you know, I have to go take care of nature. I can't stop chanting, so I don't want to bring the holy name in that place, so I'm holding my tongue. The boy said, the holy name is pure. Nothing can, can contaminate the holy name. In fact, wherever the holy name goes, it purifies everything. So don't worry, just chant. And he was so convincing, the boy was 10 years old at the time, he was so convincing that the, the Babaji actually accepted and walked on. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there watching the whole situation. So he came up to the boy, he said, what is your name? He said, my name is Gopal. He said, I'm going to give you another name. I'm going to, you're now, your name now is Gopal Guru, <laughs> because you are teaching actually in the position of a spiritual teacher. So your name is Gopal Guru. And that young boy later on became Gopal Guru Goswami, the spiritual master of Vakreshwar Pandit, great soul. He was blessed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we can also get blessed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when we chant Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasari Gaur Bhaktivin and follow it up with Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We hear this over and over again but we have to keep hearing it over and over until we actually get it When we get it we'll be doing it 24 hours a day and we understand. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. When you're chanting the holy names of the Lord, you are not in this world at all. Even if your chanting is not to the perfectional stage, still you are protected from all material illusions and all material dangers simply by chanting Hare Krishna. So powerful. Therefore, it says one can never overestimate the glories of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. You can only underestimate. That's all. Okay, so we'll stop here. Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments? Yes. I called you an Vrindavan, but it's Vrindavan Anand, right? I'm sorry. 
There's so many Anandas that we're not sure if they're in Vrindavan or Mayapur or in Bombay. Anandas are everywhere. That's our movement, Ananda. <laughs> Maharaj, uh, very nice class. Thank you very much. Maharaj, you gave the example of that Brahmachari, that impression completely fixed in his mind and it was finding him extremely difficult to take out that impression. And then you requested him to chant the holy name. We understand that is the only shelter, that is the only solution. Mm. But the biggest problem that comes in our life is, before we get that taste of chanting the holy name, and that impression goes away from our heart, that takes lots of time in between. And in that between time, if we get carried away with that thing, it completely ruins our Krishna consciousness. Yeah. So, what is the solution during that, that gestation period? Till the time, we, we started the process very nicely. We go ahead also with a very aggressive note. But then also it takes time to get the taste in chanting the holy name. Before that, if we make some mistake because of that impression that has come in our heart, and if we do some mistake, then we are completely going away from devotional life. Well, this material world is fraught with opportunities to fall down. It's just the way it is. Padam, padam, yad, vi padam. It's dangerous at every step. And there one can again be, what we say, reinfected by material contaminations or wrong mentalities. So one has to, one has to learn, at least from their own experience, of having that fall down, then I have to be very careful <laughs> in how I conduct my activities and not allow myself. Just like sometimes a person will make a mistake in life and they'll somehow correct themselves and go on in life. But we also caution them not to put themselves in that same situation again where that mistake occurred to avoid the environment and maybe the people involved where one became, what we say, fallen. V avoid that. And then the tendency not to fall down becomes stronger. So we have to be careful not to go back into that same area of life, the same mentality of life, that causes us to, uh, again, become reinfected by that. But the easiest way, but maybe it seems to be a little impractical, is just to sit down and chant. <laughs> and that's all, just chant, chant, chant. Maharaj, I fully agree with that. But when I'm chanting at that time, externally I might be chanting, but internally that phase itself is going on. Yeah. So how to send that? Krishna, save me. Call out to Krishna. Krishna is there. He will, he will help you if you sincerely call out to Krishna. He wants to help you. He wants to bring you back to him. And so if you make that effort in the sense that you realize you're helpless, that's the point, to realize these situations put us in a helpless you know, state. Therefore, without the mercy of the Lord, we can't do it. We can't overcome it, even if we... Maybe you continue to chant, and the mind is still diverted by the impressions of these images. I had experiences like that. You know, I did Sankirtan for like 30 years. And, you know, you can't help but coming in contact with the objects of the senses. And sometimes in the most, you know, the way that you, you want to avoid, mostly. But you just have to pray to Krishna, Krishna, save me. <laughs> And, and call out and chant the holy names of the Lord. Krishna will save you, and sometimes he'll save you by doing things such as giving you really good association. And when you have really good association, that association reminds you of where your consciousness should be, just by being in that association. So we want to avoid getting contaminated by the impressions of the material energy. But the, another thing is to realize that these impressions are not real. They're like a dream state. They don't e even exist. These are just the dance of Maya, that's all it is. 
this material energy is actually Krishna's energy and is by nature Daivi. That's why he says Daivi Esha Gunamai. That this material energy is spiritual and the forms that come in the material sense are just products of the, the creation of the illusionary energy. That's all. They have no substance at all. They don't even exist. But the impressions come in the form of these different visions or imp uh, impressions that we have upon the material energy, and they look real. Just like I'm looking at you, but I'm not seeing you. I'm seeing the body you have. You are, you're different from that. So if I think that you're that body, then I'm an illusion. <laughs> And I'm identifying with you in the wrong way. But if I know the, who you are, you're actually part and parcel of Krishna, the spiritual being. Then I'm seeing through knowledge. And everything is like that also, everything in this material world. Yesterday, I was reading one statement by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And I think this is maybe part of the answer to your question. He said, it's a meditation he gives, and he says the results of this meditation is one can become humble. And he says, one should see the earth as non-different uh, to the lotus feet of the Lord. The earth represents the lotus feet of the Lord. And he says, all living beings are on the earth, and therefore they're all situated on the lotus feet of the Lord. And he says, on the chest of the Lord is the Kastuba gem, which is a bright effulgence coming from that gem, which indicates the, the, indica indicates the living entities who are sitting both on the lotus feet of the Lord and on the chest of the Lord, which, include, which means how dear each and every living entity is to the Lord. And by practicing that meditation, he explains one can become humble. <laughs> when one sees everything in relationship to Krishna. In other words, the earth is his lotus feet, all living beings are on the earth, therefore they're all situated on his lotus feet. And on his chest, the, lo the living entities are also situated as their pure spiritual effulgence. The, jin, the kastuba gem. So, it's, for those of you who want to read that, it's in Srimad Bhagavatam. 12th canto, 11th chapter, verse number 24, the entire purport describes that, that meditation. It's nice. So you can meditate like that. If we're seeing the world the way everybody else see it, seeing it, then we're seeing through illusion. That's all. We have to see through knowledge that what we see is not necessarily the actual reality it's just the images that are present within the external environment. The reality is that all of that is being conducted by the, the energy of the Lord, three modes of material energy. And within that, Krishna exists within the hearts of all living entities. That's reality. Now, to superimpose that Consciousness on oneself may, t may take some time, but you can practice that. Practice seeing each and every living entity as part and parcel of Krishna. Especially when you see some impression that you may be attracted to, material thing, see the spiritual energy behind it, rather than the, uh, the form that is presented before you. That's reality. But don't get contaminated. <laughs> Try to avoid that. But it's very hard in this material world. But the stronger your Krishna consciousness, the more you can come in contact with the objects of sense gratification and not be affected by it. So we have to strengthen our Krishna consciousness. As Prabhupada, there was that example I used. Prabhupada gave himself as the example. Um, when Prabhupada came to the one airport, and I think it was in New York, and the devotees had come from the temple, 
And those days they would always greet Prabhupada at the airport with kirtan. So this time they brought a Vyasa son to the airport. <laughs> they wanted to give Prabhupada a royal reception. Now Prabhupada was, you know, he accepted. They put a Vyasa son down in the middle of the airport, and, you know. <laughs> and Prabhupada sat on there and he was... And there were reporters there because they also heard this very important saintly person is arriving. So the devotees were doing kirtan, they were offering flowers to Prabhupada. In the airports in those days you could do it because airports in, in those days were considered to be public property, not private property. They changed the law, the law after the Hare Krishnas invaded all the airports around the world. <laughs> it was because of us they changed the law. Now airports have become private property. <laughs> so, I'm serious, that's, that's actually true. And so uh, Prabhupada is there, and then one reporter, he's seeing Prabhupada sitting on this you know, nice seat and getting all this worship. So... He was envious, and he couldn't retain his, he couldn't control it. So he said to Prabhupada, why do you have to sit on that fancy seat? And he said it in a very, kind of like, challenging way. And Prabhupada said, and Prabhupada could have answered it in so many ways, you know, and my devotees gave it to me, so I simply accepted it. But he didn't say that. He wanted to really give this reporter a little message. <laughs> so he said, the difference between you and me is I can be in a room full of naked women and not become disturbed. <laughs> That's what he said. And then, of course, all his colleagues who were there, they were laughing. <laughs> because Prabhupada really defeated him, saying that, you know, I'm not like you. I'm actually the pure representative of the Supreme Personality of God. And just like it was, just like there was another story we just recently heard where they came with a, a Rolls Royce to pick up Srila Prabhupada at one airport. So they drove Prabhupada from the airport to his hotel. And it was some people there, you know, prestigious people. So one person also said, why do you have to ride in a Rolls Royce? Papa said, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry I had to take that, that Rolls Royce. They should have sent a golden car. <laughs> <laughs> he said, for the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you know, the conveyances are not good enough. <laughs> No, now Prabhupada's not being proud. He's just, he's under, he's letting us know that one who purely represents the Supreme Personality of God, and one cannot glorify that person enough. <laughs> yeah, so that was Prabhupada also's teaching from the position of being the object. You know. So yeah, this material world is like that. Whatever you do, it becomes difficult, <laughs> just the way it is. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, in the in this verse, in the first part of the verse, uh, in, the, in the word by word translation that you read, the the verse "Te Sadhu Krita Sarvartha," um, which is that which includes all types of uh, material activities. That's an argument we actually in India, especially, we get that a lot. It is that hey, I'm not done with my Sarvartha business. So back off and let me do all of that stuff and then I will come and do your Krishna consciousness stuff. Hmm. Yeah, we hear it a lot. Prahlad Maharaj told his schoolmates who were of the same age, five years old, when he, after preaching to them and encouraging them to take up Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada, they, they said, well, Prahlad, Prahlad, we're young. We want to grow up. When we get older, then we'll chant Hare Krishna. And Prahlad said, old means just before you die. And no one knows when death is going to come. Especially in Kali Yuga. <laughs> you know, it happens so quickly nowadays. People who are dying so fast nowadays, and its statistics are just alarming. It's just the way this age is. It's such a dangerous age, such a contaminated age. 
cancer's on the rise, people have so many accidents, so many things. It's just the way it is. We've increased the ways to die in this world, <laughs> in this age of Kali. So, an intelligent person will think, death can happen at any moment, so let me become serious in my, in my practice of, of worshiping the Lord. If, there, if they acknowledge that it's important, but they're saying, I'm going to postpone it to another time, at least they could understand it's, that it's something to do, or something to, to eventually achieve. And you have to explain that time never works according to your plan. Time is under the control of Krishna, completely. As Krishna says, Mitra Sarva Harashya Hum. I am that time which is in the form of death takes everything away. So no one can guarantee, even you hear in the Shastras, that Maharaj Pariksit was guaranteed seven days. Well, we're not even guaranteed seven minutes. <laughs> and we don't really know uh, the way the material energy works. But if you, of course, if you take shelter of Krishna, Krishna will protect you. But even though sometimes we find, even devotees, they find out after coming back from the doctors that life has become shorter than they conceived. <laughs> and all of a sudden they realize they have this disease. So yeah, so we don't know. That's just the way the material world energy is. You can't stay here and you can't be happy here. Haribo. <laughs> So we try to encourage people. Usually people are not encouraged by, by trying to convince them. Our preaching really is putting seeds into their consciousness. And then when their life takes a turn for the worse, that seed may start to germinate. And they, then they start becoming more thoughtful about what they, now maybe I should become more serious about my spiritual life. But therefore, we never give up on preaching, even if it falls on deaf ears, we still continue. That's our duty. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so many reasons why not to take up Krishna conscious, but there's one good reason why, is that this you can't stay in this material world, and you can't be happy either. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Any other comments, questions? Thank you. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra ki, grab the lotus feet of the Lord ki, and don't let go ki. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada ki Hare Krishna.